Our friends at Perla are big proponents of simple, long-term investing, and now they're rewarding you for being a long-term investor too. Perla investors receive points every time they fund their account and invest. The more points you earn, the higher your chances to win one of their weekly prizes or the big prize at the end of the month. To get started, check out the competition terms and conditions and open your Perla account today using the links in your podcast player. This episode of the Australian Finance Podcast is proudly supported by GlobalX ETFs and the launch of the US100 ETF, better known as N100. N100 offers Australian investors exposure to 100 of the largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. N100 focuses on innovation-driven companies, providing a growth tilt to core portfolio holdings. You can learn more about N100, including reading the PDS and TMD by clicking the link in your podcast player or by simply heading to globalxetfs.com.au. Welcome to the Australian Finance Podcast. I'm Kate Campbell. And I'm Owen Rusk. And we're here to give you the tools and knowledge to invest both your time and money better. If you're new, feel free to jump in with our Starter Pack series that aired in early 2022 or our Shares or ETF mini series. We've got plenty to share with you in today's episode, but if you want to catch us on socials, head to Rusk Australia on Insta and Twitter. I'm also found at Kate Campbell AUS on Insta. And I'm Owen Rask AU on Insta. Just beware of the fake accounts. We'll never DM you about trading strategies or crypto. And if it sounds a bit weird, it's probably not us. And just one final heads up before we get into the show. This podcast contains general financial information only. Welcome to this first episode of Money and Chill for 2023 on the Australian Finance Podcast. Kate, how you going? Good. I made it back from Europe in one piece. Yes, we'll hear all, bleh, we'll hear all about that today. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, Monique, welcome. You've been working for a few weeks, but welcome to this first episode of Money and Chill. Thank you. Good to be back. Yeah, and welcome to everyone that's listening. After a big summer series here on the Australian Finance Podcast, we broke some records, mm. which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems um, New Year, New Me was really popular. Uh, people loved the countdown. Well done, Kate. So we've got Queenie on the show, had Tash, Evan, Drew, so many Pete. Pete. Wow. Now we're just trying to think about the others that <laughs> appeared, but uh, it was heaps of fun. I think Monique was in there. Yep. Yeah, there we go. No, not to forget Monique. But this is uh, the Money and Chill segment on the Australian Finance Podcast. So this is once a month where we get Monique, our producer, Hello. on the show. And we talk about more laid back stuff. We share some money hacks, what we've been working on behind the scenes, etc. If you do want to get more serious with your finances, don't worry, we do that too. Those are found in the other episodes in on the channel. So subscribe. If Virtually you like any other episode. But Virtually any, any other one except this one, which is more casual. So we've got a lot to cover. Kate, obviously uh, traveling, which is going to be a big one, but we usually do a few money hacks and things like that. Yes. So um, I know... Monique, you just spent all of summer reading finance books, and of course, yeah, I think you just, I think you read about sixty. Have you finished yep. the psychology? I money did. <gasps> oh, is that your I first know. ever fully completed finance book? Yes, it is. I'm excited. <laughs> psychology money. Like How'd you find it? Would you rate it out of five? It. Did you do, leave a review? Good reads. I, I will. Do you have a good um, reads account? Definitely not. I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the uh, the first I do book. If anyone I, wants to be friends. I think that's the first book I read since uh, Harry Potter or something. But anyway. It's very similar. similar. Yeah, very, very similar. similar. All in the mind. <laughs> no, yeah. but I did enjoy it. It was really cool. And, like, I liked the shorter form stories. And yeah, he's good it's like that. all It's all very positive. And it's it's a book where you come away feeling good about yourself, I feel. That's how I felt anyway. And, like, yeah, yeah does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's how I felt when I first read Barefoot. Yeah. Many, many, many years ago, I felt really good. Yeah, there you go. Felt like I had... Guidance, but also validation, which is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Kate knows I love validation. So that's probably why I liked it so much too. (laughs) Um, So you'd give it to a friend? Definitely. I think I've already, I've given it to my dad actually. Oh, nice. So he's going to chat about it. Yes. Your own family book club. I know. (laughs) (laughs) And your dad would probably like that. Yeah. Shout out to Monique's father. Um, Yeah. It'd be great. I'm sure he'd love it. Just be, a random he's shout out. <laughs> no, he's into he investing, is isn't he? Yeah, no, he is. He's yeah. always been, so I think he'll enjoy it a lot. Yeah, cool. Um, so tell us, do you, did you discover anything about money over the break? Did you 
try any new hacks? You're pretty thrifty. Yeah, well, I am pretty thrifty. <laughs> and I think I kind of uh, incorporated it into my Christmas gifts this yeah. year. Christmas gifts. Because, okay. like, my family loves to give gifts and it's lovely. But um, I also have a one-bedroom apartment that can't hold much stuff. So uh, this year when they're like, oh, Monique, what do you want? You know, what do you need? Blah, blah, blah. I was kind of like, can you please just give me like Coles and Woolies vouchers? Because, I mean, I don't have space for anything. And that's also helpful, like yeah. free food for me, at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that was really, really good. And I'm still living off the, those vouchers like a month and a bit after. So you got a decent haul. Yeah. Got a really decent haul. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It, it kind of like, it's also helped like me and my partner's finances in a way because we've just saved like, $200 at a time type thing. Um, and we've also like, I, I think we all already kind of did this, partially maybe because we're a bit lazy, but also like we both work kind of day and night. So there's a time issue as well. So going shopping, is well, grocery shopping is kind of a challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we only really go uh, grocery shopping like once a month. And that's kind of determined with like how much food is actually left in the fridge and it's close to nothing. So the fridge and freezer has to be kind of completely gone before we go grocery shopping and that saves us a lot of money as well. This is like less wastage. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, and okay. like so much yeah. less wastage. Like I reckon our bins last week had one garbage bag in it, one really? little garbage bag, yeah. We have like no wastage. It's really good. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Is it bad to give money for Christmas? Like, vouchers are, seem like they're okay because it's something. Yeah. Have you ever given cash to someone or...? I have. Yeah? I feel like a voucher is better, though, because you have, like, something specific that you need to spend it on and it's more... It feels more like a gift. Yep. Whereas you give, like, you know, 50 bucks to someone or whatever. Yeah, here's a pineapple. For, for it me, it's kind absorbed. of... Yeah, and it just goes in the stash, you know? Yeah, it just goes in my stash. revenue. And... I never actually know what I do with it. Yeah, true, true. It just goes into the rest, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've given foreign currency to multiple people as oh, yeah, gifts that's cool. before. Even yeah, my yeah. aunt that's the cool. other day wanted a, a £10 note because she wanted the, the Jane Austen on the back. But, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I think cash, is, it's a bit weird one. Like, unless someone specifically definitely needs the cash and you know that it will give them immediate help, I'm probably more... I'm more of a physical or a, like an event experience gift yeah. kind of person. Yep. Um, mm. I'm not really a gift card kind of giver. Yeah. A lot of the blokes out there are listening to this saying, so, hmm, still going to give the cash. <laughs> yeah. Yep, no, fair enough. <laughs> uh, no, like, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give cash. Uh, <laughs> I, it's probably not as thoughtful, it's fair to say. Mm -hmm. I feel like it puts a price on someone and it puts a price on the gift. Only if you go like, here, Jimmy, here's 20, Sally, here's 20, and Jeffrey, you get 50, and then Monique, you get 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yep. But no, it's, yeah, I mean, like that's I'd good. rather just do no gifts if it was going to be cash. Yeah, yeah well, okay. that, that's like the a, thing, like, especially- Do something with them or something like that. Yeah. 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 That was with, with my parents. Um, they were like, what do you want? I'm like, I don't want, I don't want anything. Like, I just don't yeah. want anything. Which is the classic- Reply. Yeah. yeah, and like they're like, no, we need to give you something. It's Christmas, and I'm like, well, this is what you can give me. <laughs> yeah, and you get to spend Christmas together. That's okay. yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, good stuff. Nice. Um, I'm sure like Monique normally comes up with all the creative ones throughout the year, so I'm sure we'll have quite a few more throughout the year. Yes. Uh, I did get a bit stuck this month, so I do have some. Um, one of the ones that I'm, I just was, I don't know where I was, but I was just, I had an epiphany, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to buy any new clothes, asterisk, uh, in 2023. Uh, I am not going to buy T-shirts, shirts, suits, pants, none of that, jeans, nothing brand new. I'm going to buy it all secondhand. It has to be secondhand. In an attempt to do the whole three R's of uh, sustainability, like reduce, reduce, recycle. Uh, so the asterisk is I'm not going to buy secondhand undies, thankfully, <laughs> uh, or socks. I do like my my funny socks. And shoes are another one where it's like a bit hard to do sometimes. So um, that's another thing. But it's mainly just like the, the kind of things that tend to go to waste. Like you go to Kmart, you get a $10 shirt, you wear it three times, throw it out. Not going to do that. I'm just going to try and collect uh, from like Vinnie's or Salvo's or whatever. Uh, and I've already found some amazing things. And I think the key thing if you decide to do this too is just don't 
ever put yourself in a situation where you need something, like you need a shirt because you're going out or you need something for whatever it is that you're doing, just have a kind of a mental list in your head and just be ready if something does pop up when you go totally. to that town and there's a, a $2 shop. But um, So I've, you've been visiting regional Australian op shops over the summer. Yes, I was in Cairns. Um, hot. And um, yeah, I would say that uh, the Vinnie's there is quite good. Uh, it's got a good range. I uh, can't remember the street that it's on, but it's towards the airport. And um, it, I got a like a Bahamas-inspired white top, like a sh- collared top, which is really cool. Uh, it's like seven bucks. And then I got this is the thing that you guys are gonna be like, damn, I can relate to this. Got blue steel boots. Ooh, damn, yeah. I can relate to yeah, this. Yeah, damn. Um, so blue steel boots are like the best boots for tradies. Steel caps. They're normally. So the ones that I got are normally 250 bucks. I got them for $70. And you might be saying, well, you got them secondhand. They're actually just brand new. Like I put a photo on Twitter, I think, the other day. They are actually brand new. They're just, in, they're just not in the box. It was insane. It just happened to be my size. So, you know, you, sometimes you score those bargains when you go through. But fun fact, don't you make sure you do compare to brand new prices because I was at the register and this lovely old man and woman was standing there. And then this guy walks up and he's like, hey, you know that bike you're selling over there? Well, you sell it for like two fifty, and brand new, it's two twenty. Oh wow! Oh my god! <laughs> it's so um, he's like, yeah, that's a so Kmart the, bike. The price yeah. is a bit <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, so just check yeah. and know what you're buying. But um, you can find some great things in there. And to be honest, like you know, of the three of us, clearly the one that's into fashion here. Obviously, uh, <laughs> not really. Um, a lot of that stuff's kind of come back in, like that that um, the kind of like more like you see it around Brunswick and yeah. places like that in Melbourne. Um, that kind of stuff is coming back in. So there's a lot of those clothes you can buy really cheap yeah. and uh, it's often good labels. Did you say there's one in Paran? Mm. Good shop in Paran? Yes. South Yarra Paran, I think. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give it a crack. And that's basically it. Other than a few things that I went to before we get to Kate, I um, I got some tips from folks on uh, socials, just on Instagram. Uh, if you live in West slash North Sydney, uh, buy a uh, cheaper buy miles saves me so much money, says Mimi. Consistent with nice oat milks for one dollar. What the heck? Uh, Burke's dog says, "Hey, Owen, mentioned this one to you and the team at Finfest. Uh, may not be for everyone, but now that travel has resumed, house slash pet sitting is a great option. I paid zero dollars in rent for five years, living all over Sydney." But for people working in a flexible role, such casually slash from home, whatever, and love pets, uh, it you need to have a backup home. And I, I think that's a great option. So there's, if you want to travel, there's, if you go to trustedhousesitters.com, uh, this, you pay about 120 bucks. And if you're traveling and you've got really loose plans overseas, like particularly London, London's a big one, um, but even places, places in the United States, um, they estimate you will save... 30% or more on your travel hmm. by using that. You just need to be flexible with dates and you need to obviously be at the house every now and again to feed the animals, but that's it. Um, Cornflower Blue says, an obvious one is to declutter and work out what you have not been using and sell it on eBay, Gumtree, Facebook, etc., and make a little extra cash for your cleaning. And I'll give you one more, uh, which is this one. I cycle between food delivery platforms such as Dinnerly, Everplate, Marley Spoon, and HelloFresh. Sign up, then cancel the subscriptions once you're out of the promo period, then sign up to another one. They always send you another 40 to 50% off voucher uh, every few weeks. Can uh, confirm. Can confirm. You're on yep. this bandwagon at the moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have been doing this for two years without fail. Nice. So good. So, I mean, there are heaps that people sent through. Like, I, I had some really good ones. Serena, so many people sending in their stuff. Uh, Honeybird Travel, really good money-saving hack as well. Thank you to everyone that did send them through. They uh, they made my life easy, and they're great for us to share on the show. So, keep them coming. Now, that's enough from me, Kate. Tell us everything. What's <laughs> happened? Stuff in everything. the beginning. Everything. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I started the trip. So, well, if anyone's new to the podcast, I probably should add some context. Mm. I went on my long-awaited trip to Europe over the summer. That because I Because you'd planned to go before. I planned to go in 2020 for my six-month adventure, and I'd saved and planned intensely Quit on a spreadsheet job. for about two years beforehand. But we all know what happened in 2020, so that went on the back burner. So I finally got away for four weeks over the summer. Yep. And I had an absolutely wonderful time. 
I went to Rome, I went to Paris, I went to London, I went to Edinburgh, and I went on a tour around the Highlands. So good. And it was quite an adventure. It was definitely a challenge traveling solo because you have to make so many decisions by yourself and you've got no backup person. Because when you have a friend or mm-hmm. multiple, a group of people, you can go, oh, where do you think we should go? We should go there. Okay. Look. And you've got someone to go out with for every mm. meal and... Mm. It just makes things easier, but I was doing it by myself. So trying to navigate everywhere on my own and making lots of friends, which is the good part of traveling solo. It definitely pushed me to talk to a lot more people when if I had a group of people with me that I knew, I probably wouldn't have done that. So yeah. Yeah, totally. when I went to places, I when I went on tours, when I went to different hostels, I actually went up to people and started saying hello and having conversations. And that meant that I really had dinner alone, which was wonderful. Um, So I think that was a good challenge. My most eventful part was after the first week, my phone died. Completely dead? Yes, completely dead. Very dead. Oh, boy. And so I had thought I was very clever at the start of the trip because my sister told me I could get an eSIM, which I could have running at the same... Yeah, you have it inside your phone. phone. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can set that up on your iPhone. And I paid about $100 for unlimited Wi-Fi for 30 days across anywhere in Europe. So I was like, I'm set. I can get maps anywhere. I can access my bank accounts, everything. Beautiful. So it was going well Mm. until the phone died. (laughs) And then I realized I could not access my banking. I could not pay via Apple Pay. Luckily, I had set it up on my watch, so that worked. Um, And I still had the card. I didn't have backup cards because I just hadn't really thought the whole thing through. (laughs) I couldn't access maps. Social media, anything like that. Luckily, I had taken my iPad with me because I'd planned to read some books on there. And so I was able to use internet at hostels and get Google Maps up so I could get to the next location. But, you know, um, you you look super cool when you're whipping out the (laughs) iPad on the street corner (laughs) once you've connected to the next person's free Wi-Fi. I've probably got a lot of viruses because I connected to hundreds of different free Wi-Fis. Figuring out the map, I took a screenshot and then got to the next location. I got lost multiple times. And when I went to shows or museums where I had to book a ticket, and it's all QR codes now, Mm -hmm. I had to bring out the iPad. (laughs) And the QR code was so big. And multiple times people were like, I've never seen a QR code that big before. (laughs) And they struggled to scan it. Um, And taking photos of an iPad also looks looks really great too. Yeah, yeah, Um, I can imagine. You look really, really cool. Um, (laughs) So it definitely challenged me a lot more not having a phone for the next three weeks because, one, I stopped taking photos because I was like, oh, taking photos on the iPad is lame and my camera was really bad because it's an older iPad. So I stopped thinking about taking photos which probably made me more in the moment because I didn't have internet except when I connected to street corners. I had to really get a better sense of direction because I'd take a screenshot Mm. but I'd have to kind of get the general gist. So I got to know the areas near the hostels I was staying a lot more. And uh, I also didn't know how much money I had in my bank account for a while until my parents pointed out that at ATMs you can do a, a card balance check and it's free. And so I haven't done this for years. I haven't done that in God knows how long. Yeah, I, I don't I remember. I haven't been to Asia, but God knows how <laughs> yeah, long. Like, that would never while. cross my mind. Um, but you can pop your, pop your card in any ATM and just put in your pin and just ask for a balance check and it will come up in the screen how much you've got left on that card. Huh. So that gave me some peace of mind that I had enough money to make it through to Beautiful. the next stage. But I would recommend it spreading your travel money onto a few different cards so you've got some backup plans because one of my banks uh, was an app-only bank. Oh, really? Yes, and it doesn't have a desktop version. So I couldn't get into the app because I didn't have – I couldn't do the SMS code and there was no other option. Um, So that meant I couldn't transfer money from a savings to a transaction account, but I was able to transfer money to my spending account from another bank account that had a desktop login option. So I could go on my iPad and log in via the browser. Wowzers. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are traveling overseas. Uh, If you do lose your phone and it's an SMS code system, um, it might be quite difficult. So make sure you have Mm. written down your bank account details somewhere maybe a piece of paper that's at the very bottom of your backpack. Um, so you can log into your bank accounts via a web browser if someone lets you use their computer or something like that because most of us don't travel with a laptop. Most probably don't travel with an iPad. 
So I was just yeah. lucky I had that. Yeah. Um, so you've got some backup options for accessing your money. Yeah. I Sorry. remember when I went overseas, what I did, I had the like my travel card that had already like euros on it, already mm-hmm. transferred. And then I had like a the up card, which was Aussie dollars. And then I also had a separate debit card as well. And then I went with my partner who also had his separate debit card as well. So we had like those backups yeah, in case yeah. something screwed up. Yeah. yeah. So if you're so, like, especially if you're traveling solo, I think you need a few backups. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about that beforehand. Yeah. And I was saying, if I hadn't had my iPad, I didn't know a single one of my bank logins. Mm. I, I don't know those client numbers, the the ten digit yeah. number sequences, and I would have been in a world of hurt um, because I definitely had to transfer some money to have enough for the rest of the trip. So I would check your backups, make sure you've got some alternative options to log into your account. Maybe not put all your travel money in one bank account. Take some backup cards. Uh, maybe you know someone who's able to send you some money. Not everyone is. Um, but just having a few backup options there. Definitely. Yeah. And I guess that another lesson learned is buy as many Apple devices as you possibly can. <laughs> yes. Having backup Apple devices without <laughs> that iPad, what would, you, what, what would have you actually done if you didn't have the iPad? Apple Watch. Because then, right yeah, then I wouldn't have been able to contact anyone. So I, yeah. must, I probably would have had to ask the hostel to use their computer oh my God. to log in. Internet cafe then stuff. I, internet cafe. <laughs> but then I wouldn't have known any of my acts, so maybe I could log into my iCloud account and find something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, luckily I didn't have to deal with it. But one of the girls I met at a hostel said, oh, she brought a backup phone just for this circumstance if something happened to her main phone because there's so many apps that require that SMS code yeah. as a security measure to log in or an authentication code. So now I've mm. lost access to all my authentication codes set up on my phone. So I've had to be, I've been calling other banks and providers to reset that, do all the ID check to set up the authenticator app on my new phone. Yeah, right. So it's been so much fun. Good stuff. Wow. Yeah. Good wow. stuff. I would have just caved and bought a phone straight away. Just come home. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Call it a day. I'm done, guys. I can't function. <laughs> All right, Kate. You've got an update for us on the cost of things in central London, which is where you spent a lot of time. So tell us a little more. Yes. This will also give us insight into what Kate is yeah. purchasing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, since we are a finance podcast, I'd think, I thought I'd share some dollars, or in this case, pounds. Uh, so... For beverages, uh, coffee was definitely a bit more expensive, um, but I was really into this place called the Chai Guys at Seven Dials Market, but they've got a few locations, and they made the best chai I've ever tasted, mm. like in huge teapot-looking things, and they had different flavors, and they did a tester for me, and I tried a few different ones. So and, good. Um, mm. Like, instead of getting a coffee, it was chai, and it wasn't powder, and it wasn't brewed tea in a teapot. It was just... I don't know, the milk was cooked with the chai. That Northern Hemisphere <laughs> it was stuff. so good. Yeah. Anyway, so that was £3.8, so $6.70, my bank said. when it $6.70. Yeah. It's Not almost bad. as but expensive I mean, as Melbourne. It was pretty much <laughs> it was a luxury <laughs> beverage. So. Oh, okay. Well, yep. I case. went and got breakfast at a place called Farm Girl in Kensington, and so for... Toast and eggs and a coffee, I paid £13.5, so that was $23.90. Mm-hmm. That's so, reasonable. Not bad. Yeah. Similar. Not bad. Yeah. Similar. If you go for brunch in a nice Melbourne suburb. Yeah, no, exactly. Oh, you'd be you'd more be than like, 24 bucks. Yeah. Probably nearly 30 Although if it's point. just, yeah. It was just eggs on toast, so it wasn't. Oh, right. It wasn't like five side. Free items. range eggs or regular yes, eggs? Yes, free range eggs. Chicken eggs? They were chicken eggs. Okay. Can you refer? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, in terms of accommodation, I was staying at hostels. Um, so I was picking ones with better ratings and I was picking female-only dorms and smaller numbers. So you could get up to 16 people in a room. So I was picking like four to six people in a room. Yeah. Um, and they had en suites for that room, just one, yeah. like, nice. one shower bathroom situation. So one of the hostels I stayed in in London that was near Hyde Park, if anyone knows that. It's a huge park. Uh, for seven nights, that was $462 Australian. So that's approximately 66 per night. That's not bad at all. 66 clams. What's the ideal number of people in a room? <laughs> like, Four was good. Four was good. Six was fun. What's, I didn't try any more than that. What's nine? Yeah, nine. If six is... Nine's maybe not a good time. No. And 12? 
No, nah, that's too many. <laughs> that's way too many. What about 16? <laughs> no. That's, that's like an I army barracks. I did see one yeah. out of 20. That seems 20. too much. Wow. That's for the real, the nah, real animals. No, I couldn't do that. Us. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I met lots of people who had been planning to travel for six months or 12 yeah, months, yeah. and so they were the budget was much more important to them. And so they were cooking at the hostels and they were doing like low, lower budget activities, walking more places, and they were staying in the 20-person rooms um, because they were maybe half the price of what I was paying for a night. Yeah. Makes sense. It's just a place to crash, yeah. I guess. And then uh, everyone's favourite, fish and chips and uh, mushy. Well, they weren't mushed very much. They just seemed like fully formed peas. It said mushy peas on the menu. Uh, that was £16, so 28 Dollars and thirty cents. So that so, was a little bit expensive, I thought, for what I got. So fish and chips plus m- semi mushed peas. Yes. For twenty eight bucks. Yeah. What kind of fish was it? I don't know, cod. <laughs> it wasn't cod. amazing. It was okay. <laughs> it was fish. Just a standard cod. Yeah, yep. sure. Okay, so that's not too bad. But you would probably say if you looked at that and you were going to stay in London in particular, you would it be more expensive in Australia. Just yeah. overall. I yeah. mean, a journey, one way journey on public transport was nearly $4.50 Australian. One way? Yeah. Yeah, right. That's not bad. Yeah. I think it capped out, but I didn't have a, I don't think I hit the cap. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you probably go like a few times yeah. and then it's like a daily rate or whatever. But then going to shows and going to musicals, I was paying anywhere from $40 Australian to $100 Australian per show or play, depending on how big big and popular it was they were always mm. sold out but i was usually able to the day before get a, a single person restricted few seat and they were all great so i had a great time um and that's seemed to be a lot cheaper than going to a really good musical over here yeah well yeah if, yeah, if you go to some of the bigger ones here like, exactly even like yeah. things like harry potter and all that it's a few hundred dollars right mm-hmm. yeah. so and over there in, in london the, the british museum the national gallery all sorts of places are free to go yeah. in so I, I went in with the expectation that London would be expensive, and, and it was, but I don't think it was an ex- as expensive for staying in hostels that people made it out to be. Okay. Sweet. Did you check out any EPL, any Premier League games, soccer fan? No. No. I heard oh. people mention sport a few times. <laughs> <laughs> the sport. <laughs> sport. Uh, uh, that's great. Okay. Well, that sounds like you had a fan tabulous trip. Yeah, I did. I did have fun. Yeah. I was ready to come home, but I had fun. Yeah. Five weeks is great. A great stretch in Europe. So yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Well done. Nice. Yeah. I survived. No, nice. <laughs> like it, like it, like it. Okay. So now we'll just uh, finish off the money and chill with a few things that's going on behind the scenes. We know a lot of you like to know what we're up to, what we're doing, uh, what we're kind of just working on. Uh, obviously, Christmas is a great time of year to reset the batteries focus on the year ahead, et cetera, et cetera. So it did turn out, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, sure enough, <laughs> that January 2023, i.e. we're recording this on the 2nd of Feb, that was only a couple of days ago, was the single biggest month ever on the podcast. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And not just bigger. It was like, I think it was we were our, because we can see like total downloads and number of unique listeners when we look at the, the analytics, right? And we could see that we were, it was 21% higher than December. December is often a bit of a soft market because people got other stuff to do, but 21% higher, which is huge. Not bad at all. Yeah. So you're obviously telling your friends about it. Your friends are finding us and that's just amazing. So the entire RAS community and we all thank you for that um, because it means more students enrolled in courses, uh, free courses. It Better means guests. But yeah, better guests, and we've got some big ones, like one in particular coming up. Um, and it just means like we can just bring you more, and we can it basically in, in reality it means that we can spend more time on individual shows and uh, prepare more free stuff for you. So um, yeah, keep telling your friends, keep telling your your family to to join us, particularly at the start of the year is when they're most motivated to talk about money. So give it a crack. Um, we also would love to hear from you, Kate. I think this is really important. Yes, so we're plotting out the rest of the year's worth of content because we we like to plan. And if there is something that we haven't covered or haven't covered recently since we have been going for quite a while now that you want us to talk about on 
the investors, the finance, the business podcasts, maybe cover an article on Rust Media and Rust Core. Whatever. Send us a message on Instagram. Make sure you don't follow any of the impersonator oh, accounts. We're yeah. not going to DM you about crypto or trading. It's just Rask Australia, and you can go to rask.com.au to verify it's the right account. Um, send yeah, that's us a really message. important. Double click on that. Like, please, there are some scam accounts out there. They they might look like us, but they might have an underscore, or there might be something weird about them. They might end with a Q. That's yeah. a current one running around. Yeah, never, never. We're never going to approach you and talk to you about trading we're never going to talk to you about cryptocurrency please report them don't report the main account the actual account but report them uh, we've spoken we've tried i've tried to speak to in, uh, instagram about it but please just yeah don't fall for that yes so send us a dm on insta send us an email jump into the rest core community and let us know what you mm. want if there's a guest if there's a topic to cover in 2023 and we'll try and slide them in to the schedule somewhere Interesting. Uh, yes, we will. Um, Monique, question for you. Yes. What have been your favorite episodes? I'm going to put you right on the spot. Oh, so your favorite Monique episodes across us. all the podcasts over the last few months. Oh, my lordy. Um, I think I said this to you recently. I really enjoyed like the Evan Lucas ones. Oh, Evan Lucas. Yes. Writing this down. Yep. Um, the book one. Evan Lucas is the author yeah. of Mind Over Money, by the way. He's been on the show a few times. And yep. he was he was in one of the summer series ones as well. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yes. Um, oh, now what I about forgotten. Nick Crocker? Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, I thought he was awesome. Be. Yeah, Nick Crocker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's the um, venture capitalist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Did you like Glenn's episode? Glenn, actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was that just um, came out this week. So, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm just writing these down. So, I'll share these on uh, yeah. Instagram. So, yeah. Um, we What about, the, like, you know, we had some great ones like Queenie as well. Queenie was cool. The, the budgeting one. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. That was Monique's episode. Yeah. The, uh, my episode, <laughs> yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, also, the happiness one. Had to buy happiness. Oh, buying one. happiness. Yeah. Yeah. That one was really nice. Yeah, that was brilliant. That yeah. was really good. It was a good. while ago now. That was probably six months ago. Buying happiness. Yeah. If you do remember that episode, we talked about like using money as a tool for freedom. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, eight ways I to buy happiness. I can send you the academic paper if you like. <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> oh, you know you'll read it on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I need a few wines with that one. Um, so <laughs> that's great. She's read my book, so she's okay. ready to go. <laughs> so Evan Lucas has obviously appeared on this channel a few times. You'll hear more from him in 2023. Uh, Nick Crocker appeared on the Australian Business Podcast first, but then it was shared across because that was just a brilliant conversation. Glenn James appeared, who's the founder of My Million Money, on the Investors Podcast, it's the yellow one, you know, that one that we do off to the side. Um, Queenie appeared on this show um, and special shout out for Queenie Kate tell us more what is happening well Queenie has made our TikTok account go viral I guess <laughs> yeah. for TikTok yeah um, her hack on the Coles, Coles rain check feature mm. which uh, yes it might have been around for a while but I, I think most of my generation well, had I'd never heard about never it never knew that existed so that's so if that it, was news I think it's um if Essentially, you, if there's an item in the catalog, has to be in a catalog that's on sale and you go into the store during the sale period and it's out of stock because it's a popular item on sale, you can go to the staff and ask for a rain check and they'll write down the details on a slip and then within the next, I think it's 30 days and there's an item limit, you can come back on another day when the item's in stock and get the sale price. The sale price. But so there's, there's multiple rules, I believe. Someone from Woolworths is listening to this and writing it down now, like, got to email these podcasts, guys. Yes. From my, <laughs> we from, do this too. <laughs> no, from my Googling, Woolies stopped it during oh, COVID and they well, haven't brought it back. Interesting. Well, Woolies, bring it back already. Yes. We're waiting. So, so uh, <laughs> Queenie did an episode during our summer series for January, which was on seven ways to save money on the cost of living because I think we're all feeling it a Absolutely. little bit. I've had emails from all my energy bill providers saying your your bill is going to go up yeah. from next month onwards and yep, this nice. is how much extra it's going to be for you a month which is good that they give you that indication mm. yeah well this is a finance podcast so if you're listening to this uh, this is a serious comment make sure you are cleaning out your finances and i mean that seriously right now stop spending on crap start saving more money because 2023 could be a harder year for a lot of people then we all realize. So I'm not saying that to be doomsayer, but it just makes sense. Just do it now. Just sell the stuff. Sell that second car. If you've got a car that's just sitting in the driveway, now is a great time to sell a secondhand car. Get rid of it. Sell that stuff that you don't really need. 
Because even though I say this, like it sounds scary, it's actually an opportunity because if you run your finances properly, it actually means that if times do get hard, you can invest more at better prices. So even if you oversave, you'll have more money and you'll sleep better. So just do it now. And that means things like negotiating rents, um, it means cutting costs, um, cutting back on those subscriptions, all that stuff. I just bring that up now. It's really important as we move through 2023. Mortgage rate cliff is coming too, guys. Um, okay, so we're also working on something, Kate, with Queenie. Are we allowed to say? Don't know. Don't know. Depends how much uh, secrecy you want behind it. Oh, okay. Well, let's just say there might be a collaboration between Rask Education and Invest with Queenie coming your way soon. Yes. So please watch this space very closely. Queenie uh, is a brilliant uh, content creator. So we are stoked that we may or may not be to be announced, to be confirmed, be working with her on something, which would be really cool. We have on Equity Mates coming up. So if you're a fan of the Equity Mates podcast channel and the, what the guys are doing over there, uh, we do have a value investing mini series coming out with those guys. In uh, a week or two? Yeah, a week or two. So what you will be able to do is you don't already listen to it, go and listen to that. But um, we, as you know, work with equity mates for our courses. Uh, so we have the Value Investor Program, which is for more advanced investing. That's available on Rask Education. Um, it's normally four ninety nine, but when we air these episodes, there will be a discount code, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but we also do the Get Started Investing course for them. Which um, is free. Which is completely free. It's a fantastic course, and it goes along with their book. So keep an eye out for both of those things. Um, Jesus, it seems like a lot that we're doing here. Uh, <laughs> so I'll give you a couple of other quick ones. Our Australian business podcast is like it's, I, to be honest, it's blowing me away. Um, the Australian business folk, uh, podcast focuses on small businesses and medium businesses. You don't have to start a business. You might have a side hustle you're thinking about. You might be a manager in a workplace. It really doesn't you don't need to have a business to do this. And it's definitely not one of those ones that's like, hey, bro, go start a tech company and dominate the world. It's not about that. It's about real businesses, whether you're a tradie, you're a hairdresser, you're, I don't know, you're a landscaper, you're doing whatever. Um, that is the best resource probably you can find uh, because it takes you through everything. We've got, Kate, I'm just going to say 2,000, 3, 400 students in the course. Maybe eyebrows are wasting. I've been on holiday. So I'm not <laughs> sure. It's so been a few weeks. I think about there's, right. it's approaching 2,500 students that have enrolled in the free business course. Uh, it's got everything you need from HR docs right through to how to understand cash flow. So go and check it out. Um, interesting. Um, we are doing – this will be announced soon on other channels, but we are now the official podcast provider for the Australian Shareholders Association. So this is a huge thing for me personally, uh, because growing up as an investor, um, as a small investor, especially when I worked at The Motley Fool, we just championed individual shareholders because they're the ones that always get left behind. So if you've got 500 bucks, 5,000 bucks, you're a small shareholder. And in the finance world, you often get left behind. So the Australian Shareholders Association, or ASA for short, uh, is an organization, a not-for-profit organization that represents small shareholders. So if you have any interest in forcing companies to do the right thing, to pay their employees well, to keep the boards accountable, to ask the hard questions about things like sustainability or corporate governance or payer quality, all of these things are why the ASA exists. And we're stoked because we get to work with them now, um, not only on their events, but also for their podcasts. So you'll be hearing more from them and what we do with them in the new year, but that mainly is taking place in the Australian Investors Podcast because it's perfect alignment for them. So we're super stoked about that. Um, we are looking for people. So if you want to join the team, let us know if you have some sort of superpower. I won't bring that up now um, just for the sake of time. Maybe I'll cut to this one last thing, which is we are going on the road in mm -hmm. 2023. I think FinFest was awesome from Equity Mates. Our event in uh, December in Melbourne was so much fun. I hear it's happening again this year. Yes, it is. So <laughs> FinFest is happening again. 
kudos to the people at Equity Mates, but also we are going on the road and we're not just stopping at one place, being just down the road here in Melbourne. <laughs> we are going all up the East Coast. Our plan is to go across the to the West as well, South and North from here. We are going everywhere. So well, You're about to say the world and I'm like, <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> next stop, New York. <laughs> so, um, no, we are going all over. So, you will find more information on the Rask Media website or if you just Google Rask Roadshow. I'm really keen to get, if you are living in places like uh, regional Victoria, New South Wales, maybe if you're in Cairns, if you're in Perth, if you're in Adelaide, these types of places, which we haven't been to before, I'm really looking for someone like a local guide, someone who can help us plan events in these places. So if you know locations, if you know people in the area, if you know like where we can try to grow awareness for financial literacy in your town, please let us know because we really want to come through and we want to help people learn about finance. We do our book giveaways, all that sort of stuff. Got a hit behind me. Um, please let us know. You can just write into us, whichever way works for you. Um, it would be great to get you involved. So, Kate, okay, we'll finish up the show now, but um, any interesting reads, podcasts, things, academic journals that you're going to hand to Monique? <laughs> um, what have you been reading? Anything you want to share? Well, I did read a few interesting court cases, but I might leave that to a different conversation. But I listened to a fascinating <laughs> audiobook called The Way Home by Mark Doyle. And uh, he's been known as the moneyless man because he fully gave up, up money for a few years. But this book is about his journey to going off the grid and living without money and living without things like electricity because you have to pay for that. And uh, it, it was fascinating. He's he's an interesting man. I didn't. Does he live of, in a house? Yeah, he kind of. I think he built it or he bought it. I don't know. That bit was glossed over, probably. <laughs> okay. He, there was definitely a house because he was like reading and had put a candle. But it was just an interesting look about how a lot of our modern technologies actually end mm. up cutting us off from our community. And so, because he was doing a lot of this stuff without money, it forced him to connect with his community. And they were. He was somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, but he was still near people and so they actually worked together and they helped each other on growing produce and building hmm. fences and repairing their houses. And so it was it was a nice listen. I don't think I would want to do it myself. But I also read his uh, The Moneyless Manifesto, which was... Um, Moneyless Manifesto. A pretty hectic read, I would say. Uh, I might not recommend that one. He does go a little bit... Uh, Okay. Off. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it was. It was interesting. There was some different, uh, like um, brushing your teeth with crushed up cuttlefish. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. So, but it does make you what? think about all the ways. <laughs> when you get in your teeth. Yeah, that's a bit gross. You I need something um, abrasive. I, I guess it would kind of like take the surface off. Like right? he, he did the it dentist quite. listens to this. Like, do not no, do don't this. do that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Anyway, the, the it was well, maybe quite they're extreme. Like, yes, do it. <laughs> it was quite extreme, but it was it did make me reflect on all the ways that maybe modern technology actually disconnects me from community and things that maybe yes, mm. you could automate this part of your life, and yes, you could find the more efficient solution, but what do you lose in the process? Yeah, and so that it did make me remember that I do want to do a twenty four hour tech free day every week probably on a Sunday um, and just disconnect for a while um, because there's a lot of things I love doing that when I have technology around, I end up not doing. So it was yeah. fascinating. Mm. You could also do that when you write. Like if you wanted to be, I feel like if you were writing a lot, it's hard because most people type, but writing, mm. if you could somehow just like disconnect. I yeah, find but I would do it on not a work day. Yeah. So I could actually go out with people and not take a phone with me or things like that. When yeah, I do take it a in book a, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and um, it was it was fascinating um, just thinking about how do you live without all those modern conveniences and just the amount of ways that we use money that we don't even realise to make life easier. So it was interesting. There's a, there's a recent film that came out. It's called Where the Crawl Dads Sing. It's like a book, mm. uh, movie about a young lady who grows up in like, I think it's like the swamps in the US. Um, this is really interesting because it's completely off grid, and yeah. it get, it gives you that perspective of you don't have all those modern comforts, and then society kind of encroaches on you, and you don't realize like the world gets developed around her and that mm. sort of stuff, and it's really interesting. Yeah, wow. 
Yeah. yeah. I think l- listening or watching things about people who live differently to you is always interesting because you can get little bits of insights. Yes, it might not be something that you ever try mm. yourself, but it makes you think about the way you do things. And we're all about being intentional with your time and money here. So anything like that. I mean, it won't be a book for everybody, but if you have a lot of time to kill, it could be something interesting to listen to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. cool. Um, and you've got one more podcast rec for us? Yes. Uh, I hadn't listened to it before, but Forager Funds Management, which is an Australian yep. funds management company, Australia and US, they have a podcast called Stocks Neat, which is, I, I believe, a wi- whiskey. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a play on reference. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah you just have the whiskey straight up. Yeah, so they, no. they drink whiskey. So oh, they actually drink whiskey they try while a talking about whiskey stocks. Each time. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, so Steve Johnson, yeah. great marathon runner, by the way. He's the founder of. But yeah, <laughs> the the podcasts were short and sweet. They they're like half an hour. They covered some interesting topics. So I I listened to a heap of those and took some notes uh, while I was on some long train rides. So. That might be something to listen to if you're interested in active investing. They talked about mm. their small caps in 2023, active management, mergers and acquisitions. So different interesting topics if that is your cup of tea. If that's cool. your cup of whiskey, get on oh, it. That would be a joke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cool. I like it. Um, Any I don't... books or podcasts on? I didn't actually read any books while I was away. I just tried to escape finance completely and just completely switch off. But I did realize that when I was at Hartley's Crocodile Park in Cairns, that if a crocodile was to sneak up on me, I would have no chance. <laughs> we all knew that. I was having this discussion with someone else too the other day for some reason. Like, yeah, we just wouldn't really have a chance with a crocodile. They're well, too strong. They're didn't, dinosaurs. They're enormous. But what? Because I, I was fishing like three and a half hours north of Port Douglas, like on the coast on the water's edge I was fishing and I was like oh, I'd spot one <laughs> <laughs> Dude, one creep cro- onto the boat these crocodile park they got this like five metre croc and it sits in the water and you're like oh it's a pretty deep pond and then he goes and he aggravates it and then he shows you the water's less than 30 centimetres deep oh my God. and this isn't five metres long and you can't see it shit yeah. and, and you got to think about it crocodiles are the only animals that will that actually see humans as food like sharks yeah. bite you but they don't bite you because they don't I mean they're not always interested in eating you. Mm-hmm. They just bite you because they're curious. These things want to eat yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> so it's terrifying. Like, so, so you voluntarily went oh to God. a place called a crocodile park. It's Why actually been really you? cool. If you've been there, it's uh, th- off the top of my head. I'm going to say it's like forty bucks, but it's a solid three hours of it's like a entertainment. Tour? Yeah, they do tours on like little boats for their man-made lagoon <laughs> nice. uh, with high sides and glass and oh, all that yes. sort of stuff. Makes it all better. But it's actually one of those like wildlife kind of um, places where you can go where it's actually, you know, I think here in Victoria in particular, we have this kind of like thing because I used to work at Melbourne Zoo, right? Mm. So we have this thing where it's like safety first, like don't go too close um, and everyone's really polished and it's all perfect. But there it's still kind of like they're really fun. Um, They're really like welcoming. It's really like personal type people that you deal with at the Hartleys. And so – I just thought it was awesome. If you get the chance, it's about well, 30 minutes north of Cairns on your way to Port Douglas, just a little bit past Palm Cove. Uh, so if you get a chance with your family or just by yourself, go and stop in. It is seriously fun. Yeah, it's seriously fun. Um, so that's what I would say. Um, and other than that, like I've just been, I guess I've just been listening to a bit of Invest Like the Best. It's a podcast out of the US, Patrick O'Shaughnessy. Always a classic. Solid, probably the best investing podcast overall. Um, and then just Tim Ferriss. Just yeah. every now and again, just tune in and hear what he's had to say. Great episode Classic. in January on Habits with James Clear. Atomic so, Habits. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Author of Atomic Habits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, oh, and one actually, I did actually, now that I remember, I did actually listen to about three episodes of um, Rule, ba- Rule Breaker Investing. <laughs> Jeez, I'm going to start and end this podcast well. Um, Rule Breaker Investing by David Gardner, who's a co founder of The Motley Fool. It's like half, David is just an incre- I just find him incredible. Uh, it's like, he's like half like Shakespearean type creative writer and half investor and he's one of the best investors that have lived over the last 50 years so it's incredible nice. to hear him on a podcast and he does it every week it's free and it's so good so yeah that's yeah, nice to hear you mention an investor that's not warren not warren yeah <laughs> oh, we waited to the end of the show warren buffet i'm sure he'll come up throughout the year <laughs> um, yeah that's it monique uh do have you oh you know psychology of money oh yeah that's would that's you recommend it i would recommend we did give it to your dad so what's your next book Okay, you need to give me one. Oh, oh here we go. We've got some books over there. <laughs> yeah, sort, sort <laughs> your career out, man. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Shelly Johnson, uh, Glenn James, sort your career out. I probably shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> sort your career out. Um, but no, uh, there, we've, well, we've got so many books yep. in here in the office. So I'm sure Kate will be able to wreck one. Yep. But um, yeah, if you like to keep this conversation going, Money and Chill is once a month, please jump over into the RAS core community. It's $9.99 a month. We tell you basically how to invest your core portfolio into the, the ETFs that I like. Um, it is such an easy way to get off the, I guess, first base first base with investing and get started and feel confident in that. So we've got a heap of resources in there, like the highest uh, interest bank accounts and all that sort of stuff. You get exclusive content inside Rascore, so go and check that out. There'll be a link in the show notes. That was a great way to start the year, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me, Kate. It is always a pleasure. Welcome back from Europe, and thanks. Thank you very much. We've got lots of content planned for the next few months, so uh, stay tuned. Mm. Yes, we do indeed. And Monique, mini pizza, as always, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Can't wait for the next one. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. We hope you learned something new and were able to take one thing away from this episode. If you're keen to learn more, head on over to Rask Education and take one of our free money and investing courses. You could even become a Rask Core member for less than your Netflix subscription each month. And don't forget to subscribe for new episodes in your inbox every week. Plus, if you enjoyed the show, we'd love you to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and send any questions our way via the link in the description. And before we go on, did this podcast contain personal financial advice just for me? Absolutely not, Kate. Our podcast actually contains general financial information only. What that means is the information does not take into account your financial needs, goals, objectives, or even your situation. So because of that, it's important that you consider if the information is appropriate to you and your needs before acting on it. If that all sounds a bit confusing or you're still working out what your needs are, it's a great idea to consult a licensed and trusted financial planner. And don't forget to do your own research. This podcast was proudly sponsored by InvestSmart's Bootcamp for Beginner Investors. Build your investing confidence for only $49.50. Learn what it takes to be a successful investor with InvestSmart's Bootcamp for Beginners. This online course is self-paced over three months with live weekly webinars designed to help you achieve your financial goals and create wealth. To start your investing journey today, head to investsmart.com.au bootcamp or simply click the link in your podcast player.